just very related to our project and also something, one of the things that you've also been doing is you've been helping people, um, especially from Africa. I don't know if, whether you're also covering other parts of the world. You've been, one of the things you've been doing, apart from being an academic and being a, re a researcher and all, every other thing that you are, you've also been helping people secure scholarships um, in you know scholarships in, in in the West in universities to do their masters to do their PhDs, and um, because this is also you know related to our projects you know the whole trial coming abroad or leaving your home, I would like mm -hmm. to just hear you you know speak briefly about that project that you've been doing. How how have you been helping people? What is it that you've been doing with people and scholarships? And we just share share that share a bit of that with us. Yeah, okay, so um, for, for some time now, I've been um, helping students from, from, basically from Nigeria, but more recently, people from other parts of um, Africa have become interested in it and have been participating. But what I was doing initially was just to help, you know, some students, because I work with students in Nigeria, and uh, in my search for scholarships, I realized that there's a lot of information out there and I knew where to find those information. I knew how to put yourself together to, you know, take, take um, those opportunities. The driving force was I saw that there were these brilliant students who I feel deserve these opportunities. You know, looking at what is happening back home and uh, coming over to Australia and having one of the best education for my PhD and all that. I didn't want those students to remain in, in mediocrity or something like that. I just wanted them to have an opportunity to excel. Yeah. You know? So I do, and, I, and then I now thought that the best way to do it is to help them. So it started by, hey, I saw this opportunity for masters. Uh, you can apply for it if you want. And then they will come back to me and say, okay, I want to write um, the research proposal, I don't know how to start with it. I want to write my personal statement. I don't know how to start with it. All those things, you know, and then I was like, okay, let me see if I can help you. And then those I could help, I will. I'll just do what I can to help them. And, you know, uh, it started that way. And then um, last year, I decided to kind of formalize it into what I call the Scholarship Mastery Academy. And uh, what it is about is simply a platform that uh, gets students fit and ready for um, scholarship applications. Because um, if you have a 2-1, if you have a first class, very good, very beautiful. But from my experience, I've come to know or realize that getting a scholarship is much more than having a 2-1 or having a first mm -hmm. class. There are a lot of things that come into play. Mm -hmm. um, so in Scholarship Mastery Academy, what we do is just to, to help students become fit and ready to apply for scholarship, whether you're a first class student or a 2-1. And even some 2-2 two -two guys, there are a lot of things that they can do as well to secure a scholarship, but many of them don't know about these things. And we do that through trainings, we do that through webinars, so every Saturday we hold a webinar on a particular topic or a kind of scholarship and try to break it down and show them how to go about it. We do a lot of demos. Sometimes we, we share, like I share my screen and do live demo with them on how to identify a potential supervisor that could have money to employ mm -hmm. a, a research student and all that. And then we have an online course as well um, uh, that has some, some modules, a few modules on about nine modules on how to go about all these scholarship things. And then the coaching and mentoring, which is a more deeper one-on-one -on -one, um, program for people who are also seeking scholarship. But above all, the passion is why the coaching and mentoring and online courses involved is because um, I come to realize as well that, or I came to realize that some of these students, when you try to um, help them, they take it for granted, they waste your time, Imagine helping somebody to prepare documents and all that, and then two weeks later you call him to find out, hey, how did, he, how did your scholarship application go? Did you finally submit? And he oh, sorry, sir, I, I didn't have uh, internet on the, the deadline day, so I couldn't uh, submit the application or something happened to my laptop. You know, they will start telling you some kind of funny stories. So I just felt like, okay, it looks like... Um, 
some people some people don't um, value your time and stuff like that so now i carefully select those i give my time for free and then know those to push to the online course or the coaching and mentoring program but the money is not my problem my my major drive is to see as many brilliant students who i feel deserve an opportunity to have uh, an abroad study experience to you know get that opportunity i think sometime in the past i joined your i joined your your group on facebook so where where could you be found you have a facebook page but what's how could you be reached you have a website so the, yeah we we have a facebook page everything is scholarship mastery academy scholarship uh, mastery academy academy yeah okay. so um on facebook on instagram on on Twitter, on Telegram. Then the website is scholarships.aperwriter.com. Right? So, mm. so there you find all the information about the online courses and uh, how the coaching and mentoring works. But for people who want to join on social media, where I share most of the, sh- of the, of the, of the opportunities, is um, Scholarship Mastery Academy across all platforms. Thanks. We have people like you, you know, inspiring, inspiring. But it's 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 little wonder you're doing this up here. You you went for a conference in Australia in your second year. <laughs> oh no no, no. The, the the conference was um, um, in 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 my masters, not in my second year. Oh okay, during your masters. But yes. but even at, even at that, man, you know, it's it's so it's yeah. Even if we're doing, if even if it was doing your doing your PhD in in Nigeria, it's 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 a very common thing, yeah. Yeah. But I went to a lot of conferences uh, in, within Nigeria as an undergraduate. Mm-hmm. You know, it was part of those things that helped to build, build uh, my interest and passion in, in research and academics because we were going to virtually every animal science conference. And like I said, my, my supervisor at the time was paying for those conferences for us. So he would help us, you know, um, guide us to, to write a conference paper and uh, if the conference paper is accepted, he pays for either the registration for the conference or our hotel accommodation. You know, so I bought the one to Australia was uh, during my master's. Martin, I didn't know if you, everybody was, if you had any question. No, no question. I was just really commending him as a follow-up to what you mentioned on how much he, he has committed himself to you know, expanding his knowledge and then now also sharing that knowledge. But on things like attending conferences, even while he was an undergraduate in FUTO, that wasn't a popular activity for most undergraduates. Let's just put it that way. Especially especially for those that were in fields like his own. In many ways, it almost seems like you, you're very much ahead of the time, especially with how popular agrotech has become. In, in Nigeria and I suppose in the rest of Africa now. Not that it wasn't there before, but yeah. because there was oil, everyone was always looking after the oil. Yeah. But you seem to have tapped into this space and not just taking it as a, uh, okay, I'll just attach myself to this and see what becomes of it. No, you had actually started exploring it properly from, from a very early stage. So no, that's very commendable. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I, I encourage even the guys who I work with these days on Scholarship Master Academy to, to do that. You know, if anybody wants to travel out of the country, go to conferences. You never can tell who you will meet. Join associations in your field. Subscribe to their newsletter. All, all of this, these opportunities are in, in the newsletters, in the journals, you know. Uh, read the journals, not just subscribe, but read them. You will see opportunities that, and when you see an opportunity, don't just uh, push it away and tell yourself, "Oh, I'm not qualified for it," or it's something only for guys in the UK or US and all that. It does not matter. The most important thing is to try. Yours is to try. It is their job to not say no to you, I mean, it's not your job to say no to yourself. Yeah, uh, and that's what. Uh, but I encourage them if you can. Um, Go to conferences, uh, join associations, and try to maximize the information you get from there. I was just smiling because I, I, I kind of understand your kind of person. You, you know, you just go for every opportunity, you know, try things, you know, <laughs> throw yourself, put yourself out there, like you've said here already. You know, it's it's really, really, you know, just drive that motivation and that positivity as well. You know, like you said, give it a shot, and what was the worst that, that happens? You don't you don't get it. So. 
yeah, I think I think he definitely someone to to hang around more with. Uh. <laughs> He's always looking for uh, uh, for who to hang around with.